So back in framework three, we were talking about um, proving triangles were congruent. You can do that with angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 angle, side. Um, now we're going to take a similar concept, and we're going to show that triangles are similar. And we know that similarity means that all the sides are proportional, all the angles are congruent. So our first triangle similarity theorem is angle-angle. If two angles are congruent in one triangle to get two angles of the other triangle, then the triangles are similar. You only need to know two of them because the third angle is going to be going to have to be the same because they ha all add to 180. So if you have a 60 degree and a 100 degree angle, then the other angle has no choice but to be 20 because I have to add to be 180. So you only need, need to show two of them are congruent, and then the third one kind of just follows along, and that's enough to know that the triangles are similar. Um, you could also know that all three sides of one triangle are proportional to all three sides of the other triangle, corresponding sides. So remember, we're not looking for congruent here. We're looking for proportional. Or if you kind of combine those two, you can get side to angle side, where you have two sides that are proportional and then the angle that is included in between them is congruent. So proportional, again, just as a reminder, proportional means you do fraction equals fraction, and the fraction they reduce to be the same thing. They have the same ratio, the same scale factor, if you will. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So let's look and see, first of all, are they similar? So we have parallel lines. Parallel lines usually lead to congruent angles. So find those congruent angles. We've got angle C and angle E would be congruent because they are alternate interior. You could do the little Z and make sure uh, to find your alternate interior angles. You can do the Z with the other transversal to get these angles are congruent, and that's enough. We've got an angle, angle. Yes, they are similar. Um, just for review's sake, we also have these angles are congruent because of they are vertical angles. So we only need two angles. We know all three of them. So the triangles are congruent, which means the sides are proportional. We're trying to find BE, let's call that X, so we can solve for X. So when you do this, you need to write the proportion with corresponding sides. So the 54 side corresponds with BE, this side that we called X because it's between the one arc and three arcs, so it's got to be between the one arc and three arcs. And then the other ratio we could write, which since we started with this triangle on the left, you have to start with that same triangle when you write your proportion. So we're going to take 36 over its corresponding side, which would be 54. And we're going to solve that proportion, so you cross multiply, so we have 54 times 54, and x times 36. So now we divide that by 36. To yeah. So x equals 81. And x was the side we were looking for, so that's it. For this next example, we're trying to find RT. So 
So we have similar triangles. We know that they are similar because these two angles are congruent. And they both have this angle R up here. That's the top of each of these triangles. And angle R will be congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. We normally do it with sides, but you can also use reflexive with angles. Just like that. So when we write our proportion, we can take the bottom side of this triangle, or the right side if you want to call it that. It's 8 over the corresponding side of the larger triangle is 12. Now remember we did smaller triangle over larger triangle, so we got to stick with it on the other side. Smaller triangle, 10. Over the larger triangle, which would be this entire length, R to T, which is what we're looking for. So we'll call that X. So cross multiply, 8 times X is 8X. 12 times 10 is 120. So X equals... 15. So taking a look here, we do know that these triangles are similar. Again, we've got angle E down here is reflexive. It's in both of them. It's congruent to itself, so that's our second angle. So the triangles are similar. So now we need to look when we're setting this up, the proportion. We've got to figure out why the proportion is wrong and how we can adjust it so that it's correct. So they took y over 8 equals 14 over 10. The problem with that is y is not the entire length like it was in the last problem that we did. y is not the entire length. y is just that little section of it. So we don't have the entire length of the big triangle over the small triangle. We have just the portion. That y should be the entire length, which would be y plus 8 over just the 8. And 14 over 10. You have to do the entire length of one triangle over the entire length of the other triangle. Then it doesn't ask for us to do it, but let's go ahead and solve it anyway. When you cross multiply, it's 10 times y plus 8. So you have to distribute that 10. So that's 10y. Plus 80. Equals 8 times 14. Which is 112. Subtract the 80. And divide by 10 to get y equals 3.2. Builder was given a design for a triangular roof as shown. Explain how he knows that the triangles are similar. Then find AB, the entire length there. So first, you've got to make sure that they're similar. Find out how he knew they were similar. We have these uh, sides are parallel. ED and CB are parallel, which means when we have the transversal going down the side, we get these two angles, which are corresponding angles. So since the lines are parallel, corresponding angles are congruent. To do the exact same argument with these two angles over here, parallel lines, transversal, corresponding angles. Or if we really wanted to, we could have used the angle A up here. That's in both of them. It's reflexive property. That could have been our second angle if you wanted to. So they are similar because of angle angle, which means we can write the proportion. So let's do small triangle over big triangle corresponding sides. That would be 9 over 15 equals small triangle 6 over the big triangle, which would be all the way from A to B. That's what we're trying to find. So 
So cross multiply, you get 9 times x is 9x. 15 times 6 is 90. So x equals 10. Find PQ if possible. So first, let's make sure that these two triangles are similar. We've got angle T is congruent to angle P. We've got a 90 degree angle here, which means the other side of that's also 90 degrees. So yes, they're similar because of angle angle. Then we can take their corresponding sides. So we have, let's do small triangle over larger triangle. The 9 corresponds with 12, so that would be 9 over 12. Equals, did the small triangle 15, that would correspond with this entire length right here. We're not asked to find the entire length, we're asked to find PQ. So let's first, let's solve the entire length and then we will find out what PQ is. So cross multiply, you get 9x equals 15 times 12, 180. Divide by 9, you get x equals 20. Now remember, x was not our final answer. x was this entire length from P to S. So if from Q to S is 9 and the entire length is 20, that's just a little subtraction to figure out what PQ is. It has to add to be 20, so that's... 11 and 9, so PQ is 11. We could have solved that differently if we wanted to. We could have called this side X, the little length that we are looking for, PQ, which would have changed the X to be X plus 9. Could have done it that way if you wanted to. would work out in that way in that case x solve that out you would have got x equals 11 and you would have been done you didn't have to do the extra step some more similar questions determine if the triangles are similar and justify your answer so we do have one angle in each triangle that is congruent but we have no way of knowing any other angle. We don't have any parallel sides. We don't have any vertical angles. We don't have any angles that are shared. So we've got to try, we've got one angle. We do have some side lengths, so let's try side angle side similarity and see if that works. So if we did small triangle over large triangle, we would have this side four corresponds with this side six. And then we have the MP, which is kind of like the bottom of that triangle. That would be 8 over the length of MQ, which is the base of the larger triangle. That would be 8 plus 4, so 12. And we're always checking to see if these are the same ratio. So you can either reduce both sides or you could cross multiply. If you reduce, you get two-thirds and two-thirds, so that's, that's good. You could have done it that way. Or if you cross-multiply, you get 48 equals 6 times 8 is 48. So if when you cross-multiply, you get the same answer. That means it is proportional, which means the sides are proportional. We've got one angle in between, so yes, that was side angle side similarity. Just put this little tilde after side angle side so you show that it's similar because that's the similar symbol. If you don't put that, I'm going to assume you're talking about congruent, and that would not be right. So here we've got three 
all three sides are given to us. We just have to check to see if they are proportional, if they have the same ratio. So if we were to match this up, I would say that the six matches with the four, little rotation, the 12 and the 8 would be corresponding sides, and the 15 and the 10 would be corresponding sides. So to check your proportion, to check if the sides are proportional, we set it up 4 over 6 equals 8 over 12. And that also has to equal 10 over 15. So the only way that you can check all three of these at the same time is if you can reduce and reduce them all to be the same thing. So 4 over 6 reduces to 2 thirds. 8 over 12 is 2 thirds. 10 over 15 is 2 thirds. So we get the same ratio. So yes, they are proportional. So this is side, side, side similarity. So a little bit of a uh, thought-provoking question. Are all isosceles right triangles similar? So if we had an isosceles right triangle, means you've got a right angle there, and these two sides are congruent. So if we took another one, you've got a right angle there, and these two sides are congruent. So we have an angle that is congruent. It's got a right angle, so they've got that part going for them. Are the sides proportional? Well, whatever number this is, if that was 5, this side would also be 5. You can take whatever number you want for this other side length. You can take 106, whatever you want it to be. 106, they would have to be the same length. So are the sides proportional? Well, you would take corresponding side over corresponding side. 5 over 106 equals 5 over 106. No matter what numbers you pick there, those ratios are going to have to be the same thing because it's going to be whatever number you chose for the left triangle over the whatever number you chose for the right triangle on both sides of your equal sign. So yes, those are the same fractions no matter what numbers you pick. And that's side angle side similarity that will guarantee that. The two sides will always be proportional. This next, uh, why isn't angle side angle used? Because that was from our list for when we did congruent. It's really kind of a simple idea. If you've got angle side angle, that means you've got two angles. Which means you have angle angle similarity, which we don't even need a side for. So you don't need the side because you'll have two angles, and angle angle is already one of the things. One of the theorems. If possible, determine if the triangles are similar and justify your answer. So we're looking for either angle angle, side angle side, or side side side. We only know one angle in each triangle, so it cannot be angle angle. We only know two sides, so it cannot be side, side, side. And for side, angle, side, the angle needs to be included between the two sides, not, uh, not over here. It needs to be the angle between the two sides. So it's also not side, angle, side. So 
We don't know. There's not enough info. The sides are proportional. 6 over 3 does equal 10 over 5, but that doesn't help us if the angle is not in between. Pretty much the same thing going on here. So it would seem we've got this side is 8, this side's 10, that side's 3 and 5. So we could set up the proportion. Uh, 5 over 10 would be 1 half. 3 over 8 is not 1 half. Also, we don't have that the angle is between those two sides, so that wouldn't work out. But this is a right angle. Since this is a right angle, we actually do know what the side is. It's not guesswork. We could actually figure it out. Pythagorean theorem says 10 squared equals 8 squared plus this side squared. We have 100 equals 64 plus x squared. Subtract the 64, you get 36, which means this side, square root of 36, is 6. You do the very similar process over here, 5 squared equals 3 squared plus x squared. That's 25 equals 9. Subtract the 9, you get 16, which means x equals 4. So that side is 4. 16 is 4. So now, if we match these up, yes, the 5 goes with the 10. That's proportion. The 3 would correspond with the 6, and the 4 corresponds with the 8. All of these reduce to 1 half, 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2, which tells us side, side, side similarity. Or if you don't want to check the 5 and the 10, you could have just checked the um, these other two sides, those are proportional, and you have the angle in between is congruent, so that would be side, angle, side. But yes, they are similar triangles.